Hello, Charlie Sink here. I love LEDs, and I love to use them in my projects, so I thought I'd put together a tutorial and pass along my hard-learned knowledge. So hopefully, even if you have no experience with LEDs or electronics, by the end of the video, you can successfully hook up some LEDs. So I'll go over the basics of hooking up LEDs and provide a cheat sheet for common LED resistor and battery combinations. And I'll also go over how to work out the resistor values for yourself. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weevil Genius. So to be successful in hooking up your LED, you need to know about a few things. The first thing you need to know about is voltage. There are three other things, but I'll save them for later. What is voltage? Voltage is like the water pressure in a hose. The pressure makes the water flow through the hose. Voltage, like the water pressure, makes current flow through the circuit and light up your LED. This AA battery is rated at 1.5 volts. When it's brand new, like this battery, the voltage will be a tiny bit higher, 1.6 volts. This is a 3 volt battery holder that connects two AA batteries end to end. Why 3 volts? Each battery is 1.5 volts. Connect two end to end or in series in the battery holder, you just have to add 1.5 plus 1.5 and, and behold, 3 volts on my digital voltmeter. Well, actually 3.2 volts because the batteries are brand new and are actually 1.6 volts each. You don't have to have a voltmeter to hook up LEDs, but I highly recommend getting one. Any cheap model will do. Here is a 4 AA battery holder. It connects 4 AA batteries end to end in series and puts out 6 volts. So that's 1.5 volts plus 1.5 volts plus 1.5 volts plus 1.5 volts, which turns out to be 6. 6 volts. Again, my batteries are brand new, so each is 1.6 volts, which actually works out to 6.4 volts on the meter, but close enough to 6 for what we're doing. This is a common, inexpensive red LED. I got it from SparkFun. The link is down in the description. LED stands for Light Emitting Diode, but you don't need to know that. What you do need to know is what voltage your LED likes to run at. This LED runs at 2 volts. Great, but how do I know that? This is the spec sheet I got from the manufacturer through SparkFun. The forward voltage is what to look for, and there it is. In between the two numbers is what you want, so 2 volts. Great. As it turns out, 2 volts is the best voltage to run this LED at. More than 2 volts and it will overheat and burn out. Less than 2 volts and it won't be bright or turn on at all. Different color and size LEDs will have different forward voltages. Always refer to the spec sheet forward voltage number. One nice thing about LEDs is you can't hurt it by hooking it up backwards. It just doesn't work. On LEDs with legs, the long leg always goes to the positive or plus side of the battery. The short leg always goes to the negative or minus side of the battery. So now what? Well, if I hook this LED up to a 1.5 volt AA battery, nothing happens. The battery voltage is too low. If I hook it up to four AA batteries, like this four AA holder, it gets a little over 6 volts. This LED is designed to run at 2 volts, 6 volts is too high, and it instantly burns out. Why did it burn out? Its internal parts overheated and failed, just like anything else that gets too hot. It really wants to run at 2 volts. So now what? Thing number two that's important to know about. This is a resistor. A resistor will reduce the voltage from say four AA batteries at 6 volts down to 2 volts for the LED. Or even a 12 volt battery, like my old truck battery, down to 2 volts we need. How does it do that? As the name implies, it resists something that's flowing through the LED. That something is called current. Remember the hose and voltage being like water pressure in the hose? Well, current is like the actual water flowing through the hose. So the resistor restricts the flow of current to a level the LED can handle. Resistors come in a huge variety of sizes and values. Which one should be used? To help with that, I put together a cheat sheet for common low power LEDs, batteries, and resistors. Pause the video and take a screenshot and print it out if you want. To use the cheat sheet, know your supply voltage. I'm going to use my 4 AA holder that puts out 6 volts. Then know what type of LED is going to be used and select the resistor. Easy as cake. Here's the red LED with a 220 ohm resistor. Red LED to 12 volts with a 510 ohm resistor on my old truck battery. And a super bright blue LED to 4 AA's with a 130 ohm resistor.
Okay, great. Using the cheat sheet, you can pretty much get any low power LED to work. Maybe not at its absolute best efficiency, or at its best for a really, really long life, but working well enough. You can figure out the value of the resistor by looking at the little color bands. This one is a 220 ohm resistor. How do I know that? Here's a handy web resistor color calculator. The link is in the description. If I check the right boxes, I get 220 ohms. Magic! I recommend getting a selection of resistors if you plan to use more than one. They are super cheap, and a selection like this one is the way to go. The link is down in the description. It's like 10 bucks. I organize mine in this drawer cabinet so I don't have to look at the little color bands every time I need one. It's a little overkill, but I like it. Here's how you can work out the resistor values for yourself, so you can hook up any LED with any battery or supply voltage. But first, on to thing number three that you really need to know about, current. Electrical current is like the actual water and the amount of it flowing through our hose. Where voltage is like the water pressure, current is like the actual water flowing through. In our case, electrical current flows through our LED, only it's invisible unless you measure it. Or if you short something out and let the smoke out. Never let the smoke out. It's hard to put back in. I know this. How much current is really important? Too much and the LED will burn out or not last very long. Typically, small LEDs, like the ones in this video, like to have 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps running through it. How do I know that? Check the spec sheet and look for the forward current. There it is, 20 milliamps, which is 0.02 amps. If you have a voltmeter, you can check to see that the current is where it should be, 0.02 amps, or at least close to it. Measuring the current will confirm that the LED is not running hot. So here are the steps to figure out your own resistor value. So to begin, there are three things we need to know. The supply voltage, I'm using this 4 AA holder, so the supply voltage will be 6 volts, or really close. The second thing is the LED voltage. I'm going to hook up this green LED. Its forward voltage on the spec sheet is 2 volts. And the third is the LED current. The forward current on the spec sheet is 0.02 amps. As a rule of thumb, just about any small LED will run at 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. Step one, subtract the LED forward voltage from the power supply or pack voltage. Six volts minus two volts equals four volts. Divide the answer of step one by 20 milliamps or 0.02. So four volts divided by 0.02 amps equals 200. So 200 ohms and behold, that is the resistor value we need. The resistor value does not have to be perfect. The closest value you can get to the calculated value will do just fine. I actually don't have any 200 ohm resistors, but I do have 220 ohm ones, which are close enough for the LEDs. So let's try it out. That worked great. The LED is at maximum brightness without overheating. How do I know that? I have the digital voltmeter hooked up to read how much current is flowing through the LED. It should be very close to the forward current from the spec sheet. And look at that, it is 0.02 amps. And finally, thing number four you should know about, how much power or watts the resistor is going to have to handle. So any resistor will have two basic numbers that define it, its resistance in ohms and the power it can handle in watts. So I've been using one quarter watt resistors in this video and I know they will work just fine, but how do I know that? So let's work out the resistor watts, step one, like before, subtract the supply voltage from the LED voltage. So 6 volts minus 2 volts equals 4 volts. Then multiply the answer, 4 volts, by the LED current, 0.02 amps. And behold, we have the answer in watts, 0.08 watts, pretty small. So 1 12th of a watt is about 0.08, so that's 1 12th. To get the decimal value of the 1 12th fraction, divide 1 by 12, which is 0.08 are pretty close. As long as the resistor watt value is greater than the calculated value, you're good to go. For watts, it's fine to ignore the exact calculated value and just go larger. Going smaller will cause the resistor to overheat and it will burn out or melt the solder connecting it to the LED. So I mentioned that any resistor will have two basic numbers that define it. It's resistance in ohms and the power it can handle in watts. There is also a third number that states how accurately it was manufactured and how closely the stated resistance matches the actual part resistance. It's called the tolerance of the resistor. And it can be anywhere from 1% to 20%. 20 
For LEDs, any 5 to 10% resistor is fine. So that's pretty much it for this LED video tutorial. I hope you found it useful, and I hope it helped with your understanding on how to hook up some LEDs. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.